Is it better to take N-acetylcysteine to increase your glutathione levels? Or should you just get right to the point and start taking glutathione? Glutathione is often called the master antioxidant, and it plays a crucial role in maintaining our overall well-being. You need it for detoxification, immune function, and preventing cellular damage caused by oxidative stress. Healthy levels of glutathione can contribute to longevity and the prevention of diseases like cancer, heart disease, and neurodegenerative disorders. It also helps enhance metabolic processes and energy production, which can lead to overall improved physical performance and recovery. Now you can support your body's own glutathione production dietarily by consuming things like sulfur-rich vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, grass-fed whey protein, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables, and lean protein as well. But some people will also want to take it a step further and supplement to get their glutathione levels up higher. If you've taken a glutathione supplement before, let me know down in the comments what your experience has been. There are a lot of glutathione supplements out there that are in the form of capsules or tablets, but they're pretty much worthless. The reason I'm saying this is because glutathione is very delicate and it's easily destroyed as it's going through digestion and through the digestive tract. For oral glutathione supplements to be effective, they have to be liposomal glutathione, which can absorb much more quickly and easily before it has a chance to already get damaged. But there's also another way to supplement for glutathione, and that's by taking N-acetylcysteine. The body needs three amino acids to produce glutathione, glutamate, glycine, and cysteine. And of those three, cysteine is the most crucial. N-acetylcysteine provides cysteine in a stable form for the cells that can absorb and use it more efficiently to produce glutathione. Now comes the big question. Is it better to supplement with glutathione or take N-acetylcysteine if you had to pick just one? Now, before we get into it, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell. It doesn't cost you a penny and it's hugely supportive of our little family business. In this study, participants took either sublingual glutathione, regular oral glutathione, or N-acetylcysteine and they measured how each of these three increased their glutathione levels. To nobody's surprise, the regular oral glutathione came in third place. Like I was saying before, regular oral glutathione is not gonna be absorbed, it's gonna be destroyed, and you're not gonna get anything from it. Now in the final showdown between sublingual glutathione and N-acetylcysteine, what happened? The sublingual glutathione created a greater increase in the glutathione levels. It beat the N-acetylcysteine. Now this is sublingual, not liposomal glutathione. So it definitely did better than regular oral glutathione because it's starting to absorb through the mucous membranes in the mouth. But theoretically, liposomal glutathione should do even better. But wait a second, what were the dosages that they used in this study? For the sublingual glutathione, it was 450 milligrams a day, which is, is a pretty standard dose. With N-acetylcysteine, it was 200 milligrams, which is actually pretty low. More typical doses of N-acetylcysteine are in the range of 500 to 600 milligrams, sometimes even over 1,000 milligrams. So N-acetylcysteine may still be a real contender here. And until further research, we really can't say for sure. I would love to see a study done comparing N-acetylcysteine in the proper dose with glutathione in the liposomal form. That would be the real showdown. In the meantime, really, these are both super beneficial supplements, and there's really not a wrong way to go. And it's worth noting that N-acetylcysteine also has other benefits beyond just increasing glutathione production. It helps you to break down mucus, it's shown promise in helping to treat some psychiatric disorders, and it could help with drug-related withdrawals. It's neuroprotective, hepatoprotective, which means it protects the liver, and it can improve fertility in both men and women. So until we have the dream study done comparing liposomal glutathione with the right dose of N-acetylcysteine, the choice isn't necessarily about picking the best supplement, but rather understanding what each form is gonna offer and how it's gonna align with your personal health needs. Whether you opt for liposomal glutathione for directly boosting your glutathione levels, or N-acetylcysteine for its broader benefits and support in glutathione synthesis, you're taking a big step towards enhancing your health and longevity. Ultimately, personal experience is also gonna vary with these supplements, so I would really encourage you guys to share your stories in the comments below. Have you noticed improvements in your health from either N-acetylcysteine or glutathione supplementation? Your insights could help others in our community to make more informed decisions. Now, before you go, 
Here's a link to a video I think you'd enjoy watching next. And here's one YouTube algorithm thinks you'd enjoy. And there's a link to our website. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you all again next time.